Well, I, I, I think in the short term they're in for some pain, although there's a big long upside at the end of the day here. This is not going to be forever. I know it will seem like forever. But if you look out three months, there's a lot of upside, the return of the Boeing Max and the return of growth in the airline business. So uh, I, I'm okay with it. I do understand in the short term, because it's a cash issue, that they do have to take some action, and all of them are doing that. What type of action do you expect to be taken from here? I mean, this is an evolving story. We don't know how many cases there are going to be in the U.S., but the, the gut reaction appears to be sell the airlines on the fact that more companies are going to cancel travel and more consumers are going to cancel yep. travel. I, th I think that's true, sir, except for the fact that there are antidotes to this being developed and testing that gets better information out there to the panic that kind of pervades our country now. I mean, a couple of hundred people and two million or 200 or 300 million people is not a big number, but the fear factor, subjective as it is, is pretty, pretty widespread. So that's not uh, something a rational person can project. It's an irrational fear. It's going to get worse, and I think we all know that. Gordon, how do you think about these stocks uh, in terms of their valuations? The, the, the price to earnings multiples, I mean, albeit with the E part likely to fall, uh, are in the low single digits. Have, have you ever seen them like that before? I mean, uh, I guess only at times when people yeah. have questioned whether they were going to go out of business or not. Is that a possibility? Well, well, I've been there, so I've seen it, you know, firsthand. But you're right. Uh, I think the fundamentals of the airline business are good. I really believe the fundamentals of the economy are good, so they're going to tie in with that. This short-term hyperventilation about coronavirus is not a permanent issue in our country and won't be in the world. So it's going to recover, like was mentioned earlier. We just don't know how far down it's going to go. So you were, I believe you were in, still in charge of Continental during 9-11, and, and that was another yeah. pe period people look at as to when airline travel just, just stopped. What was that Absolutely. like, and do you see any parallels now and just in terms of consumer behavior and how the airlines might prepare or respond? Well, Sarah, you know, at the time, we were, it wasn't the end of the world, but you could see the end of the world from where we were, and it felt like that for eight months. I think it was a long pull through that, uh, really traumatic in the airline business. This, I think, is less so. I think it's going to be faster moving, hopefully, because ostensibly in the summer season, these types of viruses abate. There are antidotes to them developed and better testing. So there are a lot of good things that will mitigate the problems we're having today. And I, I think that'll be reflective in long term or this year's earnings for airlines. So, I mean, clearly there's been no restrictions on flying, Gordon. Would you, would you send your kids overseas for spring break? I mean, where should, well, what should Americans be doing? It depends on where overseas we're talking. As you know, there are some countries that have zero and probably are likely never to be affected by this. And there are things like in China and Europe? Italy. Well, in different parts of Europe, there are very, very different outcomes. There's no cases in Denmark. And so I'd be selective. And I guess, you know, in fairness, when you're talking about your children, you're probably a little more conservative than you are about yourself. So things I would do, I wouldn't want my children to do.